This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecuritylc.com. The Microsoft SDL Threat Modeling Principles Level 100 presentation introduces the role that the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle fulfills in trusted application development. It also provides an overview of the Microsoft SDL Threat Modeling process, which is a core requirement for all applications developed with the Microsoft SDL. Addressing this subject matter will enable our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. Note that this is a level 100 presentation meant to familiarize you with the Microsoft SDL threat modeling fundamentals and principles. These fundamentals and principles will be built upon in subsequent SDL presentations. In this presentation, we will complete an overview of the Microsoft SDL as well as an overview of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process. The steps required to threat model an application using this process will be covered including the freely available threat modeling tool and the specific Microsoft SDL threat modeling requirements. The Microsoft SDL is a holistic and comprehensive approach that leverages education, process, technology, and executive commitment to consistently create more secure software internally within and external of Microsoft. Since 2004, all internal Microsoft developers have been required to adhere to the SDL, and Microsoft has updated the SDL every six months to address any emerging threats since its inception. True to its name, the SDL was created to complement rather than disrupt the software development lifecycle. The core phases and principles of the SDL include the training phase, the requirements phase, the design phase, the implementation phase, the verification phase, the release phase, and finally the response phase. In the training phase, every Microsoft developer must complete mandatory security training focusing on secure application development practices. Training sessions include topics such as threat modeling, secure development and testing practices, and security for application development managers. In the requirement phase, requirements for security and privacy must accompany functional requirements of the software that's being created. Such requirements may include the use of encryption, authentication, and other security measures based on the business requirements, exposure, and sensitive data. To that end, a security and privacy risk analysis is performed at this stage. In addition, the threshold for security and privacy, or bug bar, is defined during this phase to ensure that bugs with certain severity are addressed and resolved before the software is officially released. For the design phase, eradicating coding bugs with security implications is not sufficient. Design vulnerabilities can have a substantial detrimental impact on security and are much more difficult to address during the verification phase. To that end, threat modeling is a critical SDL requirement and a Microsoft security innovation that is recognized by analysts as the next evolution in creating more secure software. Through threat modeling, architects and developers at Microsoft are able to approach security in a structured and methodical way from an attacker's perspective. This allows Microsoft to identify and reduce attack surface and mitigate the risk of potential security design issues. The implementation phase is the application code development phase where code is written by developers using industry best practices and analyzed with both internal and external tools such as static code analyzers and special security debuggers to help ensure that those best practices are being followed. Requirements are also specified by the SDL in this phase to ensure that applications are built using the latest compiler versions and built-in compiler protection features. The verification phase is a quality assurance phase within which rigorous security testing is conducted in addition to typical functional testing procedures. In the release phase, the final security review is the major milestone that a Microsoft product team must pass in order to release a product under the SDL. During this meeting, security experts and the development team review all of the activities 
mitigations, and security artifacts that are relevant to the project in order to ensure that the security quality requirements are satisfied. During this phase, the product team defines a response plan describing procedures, accountabilities, and contact information in case security vulnerabilities are discovered after the product is optional, operational and used by the customers. In the response phase, after an application is released, the Microsoft Security Response Center, or MSRC, handles any security issues that are uncovered in the weld and mobilizes product teams within Microsoft to provide timely fixes for security issues. In summary, secure software development requires executive commitment, ongoing process improvement, education and training from VPs to product managers to developers to testers, tools to aid in detecting security vulnerabilities, and incentives and consequences to ensure everyone adheres to the SDL process. As was previously indicated, this presentation focuses on the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process and how it can be used to uncover application threats early in the software development lifecycle. With respect to specific phases of the Microsoft SDL, this presentation focuses on the design, implementation, and verification phases. The Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is a process to identify security threats to a system and to establish appropriate mitigations. When performed correctly, this process enables application development teams to deliver safer and more trustworthy applications to its customers with higher efficiency and confidence that known classes of security vulnerabilities are understood and effectively addressed. Any application developed using the Microsoft SDL must have threat models completed for all at-risk features and functionality. More about the specific Microsoft SDL threat modeling requirements will be discussed later in this presentation. But for now, it is important to note that threat modeling is a key requirement of the Microsoft SDL. The Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is broken into four major steps. Diagramming, threat enumeration, mitigation, and validation. In the first step, diagramming, the application being threat model is expressed as a data flow diagram to drive the overall risk analysis process. Then, during the threat enumeration step, threats to the modeled system are identified. After threats have been identified, mitigations to those threats are selected during the mitigation step. Finally, during the validation step, threat models are validated for completeness and accuracy. One of the key benefits of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process over other threat modeling processes is that it can be performed by both security and non-security experts. This property of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is especially beneficial in scenarios where in-house security expertise may not be available or when hiring outside expertise is not feasible. More aspects regarding this particular benefit and others will be discussed later in the presentation. As we go through the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process, you are encouraged to think about your own applications that you are developing, various components of that application, and how those components can be threat modeled using this process. It is important to note that several other threat modeling processes exist. The process discussed in this presentation is one used internally at Microsoft. No claims are being made as to which process is the best, however, the process presented in this presentation has been very useful in helping Microsoft deliver safer and more trustworthy applications to its customers. Lastly, the insight gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically in this presentation focusing on the Microsoft SDL threat modeling principles, are being shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. What does threat modeling an application using the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process look like? First, an application begins with a design that addresses a problem or fulfills some business scenario. Users may enter data into an application and that data may be processed by the application in some way. With the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process, application designs are expressed or modeled as a set of data flow diagrams. Data flow diagrams provide a standard graphical representation of the flow of data within a system. The next step in the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process 
is to identify threats to the application design as shown with the red boxes. Can a malicious user spoof a legitimate user? Can a malicious user elevate their privileges across any elements? The Microsoft SDL threat modeling process uses what is known as the stride approach to answer these and other questions and will be discussed later in more depth. After threats are identified, mitigations are selected for each of the threats as shown by the green check marks. Threat modeling yields the greatest value to application development teams when it's performed during the design phase of the software development lifecycle. At the design phase, application designers have the greatest flexibility to make changes to an application to address threats. In Microsoft's experience, it is much easier to modify an application design than it is to work backwards and modify an application that has been already implemented in code to address discovered threats. In addition to being easier to make application changes during the design phase, it has also been Microsoft's experience that is less costly. Depending on the significance of the change, application changes done during the design phase may require some resources from the application design team. However, no significant developer, tester, or security tester resources are required because at this stage no application code has been implemented and therefore no application code needs to be modified. Contrast the above to the cost of re-engineering an application later in the software development lifecycle after an application has been implemented in code. Re-engineering implemented applications require designer resources approved to approve application changes, developer resources to complete the code changes, and tester resources to ensure that functionality of the application has not been compromised after those changes. Security testing resources may also be required to ensure that no new vulnerabilities have been introduced due to the code changes. As discussed in the previous slide, threat modeling is best performed in the design phase of an application's software development lifecycle. At this phase, the greatest flexibility to make application changes is available and at the lowest cost. The next question you may have is who in the application development team is responsible for performing threat modeling? Should security experts be responsible for performing threat modeling, or can non-security experts still participate in this process? Security experts will be able to threat model an application faster and more effectively than non-security experts. However, it may not be realistic to assume that security expertise will always be available to application development teams. In response to this, the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process was designed so that it can be performed by both security experts and non-security experts. So the answer to the original question is, anyone within the application team that is familiar with the design of an application could use the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process in order to conduct the necessary threat modeling activities. Furthermore, non-security experts can use this process and still arrive at the proper results. More about how this is achieved is discussed later in this presentation. Threat models should be updated and reviewed whenever a change to an application's functionality and feature set is made. Application designers, or sometimes referred to as program managers, are uniquely positioned to have visibility to these types of changes. It is for this reason that it is advisable for application designers to be ultimately responsible for the threat modeling process. With that said, developers and testers should still be part of the threat modeling process. Developers and testers are most familiar with the implementation of an application. They are able to provide highly contextual input into mitigations and they can help ensure that mitigations identified through the threat modeling process are properly reflected in the application code implementation. Thus far, we have established when to perform threat models and who should perform the threat modeling. The final question that needs answering is, what should be threat modeled? The application as a whole should be threat modeled since the potential for attack is present throughout the entire application. Individual threat models can be created for certain components of an application. However, the overall threat modeling process should account for the entire application. Security and privacy features in particular should be threat modeled. These are the controls present in an application that help reduce the risk from attack. Therefore, security and privacy features should be threat modeled to ensure that they are properly designed to be resilient to current attacks. Examples might include, but are not limited to, authentication and authorization subsystems. Any application feature whose failure has security or privacy impl implications 
should be threat modeled. Examples of such a feature may be code that is responsible for loading the appropriate user profile after a user has been authenticated. If code such as this fails to load the correct user profile under certain conditions, this could facilitate what is known as an information disclosure attack. If personal information is exposed in this attack, then the attack could also have privacy implications. Finally, applica application features that cross trust boundaries should be threat modeled. Trust boundaries will be discussed in more detail shortly, but briefly, Trust boundaries are points within an application where data flows from one privilege level to another. Let's now take some time to look at some of the top advantages and disadvantages of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process. After this slide, we will dive into the actual process and see how it can be used to model an application, identify threats, and select corresponding mitigations. The first advantage is that this process can be used to find threats to an application designed early in the software development lifecycle. As discussed earlier, identifying threats and addressing them with mitigations early in the software development lifecycle is much easier than, and less costly than if those threats are addressed later. Another advantage of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is that it can be used by both security and non-security experts. Application development teams may not have in-house security expertise or may not be feasible to hire outside security expertise. In these scenarios, the ability for non-security experts to use the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process and still arrive at baseline set of results is highly beneficial. Microsoft SDL threat models provide insight into the anticipated threats to an application design for application development teams. Designers can take this understanding and design applications that address those threats. Developers can then take those more attack resilient designs and develop safer and more trustworthy applications. Security testers can also benefit from threat models. With the insight provided by threat models, security testers can focus their efforts on areas of the application that have high potential for attack rather than on those with lower potential for attack. The types of anticipated attacks are also revealed during the threat modeling process and are useful in guiding other security assessment efforts. The key disadvantage to any threat modeling process is the upfront cost required to, succe to successfully employ the threat modeling process. In order to successfully employ and sustain a threat modeling process within an application development team, resources that train personnel, deploy software, and set up the correct internal processes are required. Contrast this to other security assessment techniques and approaches, such as the use of code analysis tools, which in most cases can be immediately deployed against an existing code base to identify code vulnerabilities. Let's now focus the discussion on the individual steps of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process. Every application begins with a vision. A vision captures the set of business objectives that an application is trying to address. Scenarios where applications will be used and use cases that describe how the application will be used are documented. Security features may be added to those scenarios and use cases and corresponding security assurances and guarantees may be communicated to customers. When application designs become available, the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process begins. In the first step of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process, application designs are modeled or expressed as data flow diagrams. Data flow diagrams provide a standard graphical representation of the flow of data within a system. In the next step, threats are enumerated by analyzing those data flow diagrams. Mitigations for identified threats are then selected. Finally, the threat models are validated for completeness and correctness. Whenever an application design or code implementation is changed, the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process begins again to reflect the new state of the application and to identify any new threats that may have emerged from those changes. As you can see, the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is an iterative process that is performed in conjunction with the standard software development lifecycle. Let's now take a closer look at each of the four steps of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process.
The first step of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is the diagramming step. The objective of the step is to take an application design and model it as a data flow diagram. There are several reasons why the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process uses data flow diagrams. The first reason is that data flow diagrams are a standard way to graphically represent data as it flows through an application. It is widely used and easily understood by most application development teams. This enables the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process to be used by a broader set of application development teams and not just those using Microsoft technologies. The other reason for using data flow diagrams is that most application attacks are based on data flowing throughout a system. Data flow diagrams provide an excellent and natural way to model this broad characteristic of attacks. In addition to the standard data flow diagram element set, the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process introduces the notion of trust boundaries, which are used to represent data as it flows from one privilege level to another. The Microsoft SDL threat modeling process uses a standard set of data flow diagram elements. The first element used in the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is the external entity element. The external entity element is drawn as a rectangular box and represents aspects not within the control of an application. For example, users, websites used by the application, and other systems are examples of external entities. The next element is the process element. This element represents an application or code within an application such as native code executables and .NET assemblies. The third data flow diagram element used in the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is the data store element. This element is used to represent data at rest, such as data stored in registry keys and databases. The fourth data flow diagram element used in the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is the data flow element. This element is represented by a directed arrow and is used to describe how data flows from one element to another. The Microsoft SDL threat modeling process uses trust boundaries, which are represented by a dotted line. Trust boundaries are points within an application where data flows from one privilege level to another, such as network sockets, external entities and processes, with different trust levels. It is critical to document trust boundaries and threat models because they indicate areas where threats can manifest and often indicate areas within an application that must be analyzed further. The next step in the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is to identify threats for each data flow diagram element in the threat model. Security experts can complete the step through performing brainstorming sessions and employing other informal methods. These informal methods may not be desirable since they lack objectivity and repeatability. A particular security expert, for example, may be more proficient ident identifying certain types of threats versus others. Or, fatigue from long brainstorming sessions may skew identification efforts. The alternative to brainstorming and other informal methods is to use the stride approach. The stride approach can be used by both security experts and non-security experts. This approach first documents the desirable security properties that an application must have and then documents the threats that could compromise those desired properties. The acronym STRIDE is used to re represent the threats of spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privilege. The original STRIDE threat set was derived from analyzing the issues encountered by the Microsoft Security Response Center, or MSRC, and the Com Common Vulnerability and Exposures CVE, list maintained at http cve .org. As discussed in the previous slides, the stride thread types document the desired application properties as shown in the first column in the table shown here, such as authentication and availability. Then, the threads that could compromise those desired properties are listed as shown in the second column. The first threat in the STRIDE acronym is spoofing threats. These threats allow a malicious user to pose as something or someone else, such as a legitimate user of an application or an external service. The desired property that is negatively affected by spoofing threats is the authentication property, which enables an application to validate the identity of a principal.
The letter T in the STRIDE acronym represents tampering threats. Tampering threats allow malicious users to make unauthorized modifications to data or code. Both data that is at rest or in transit, such as data sent across the internet, can potentially be manipulated. In the case of tampering, the desired application property of integrity is affected. Whenever a malicious user is able to perform a malicious action against an application, and that action cannot be traced or associated back to that malicious user, repudiation threats emerge. An online e-commerce application that cannot provide evidence that a customer has received a particular shipment, even if that shipment was indeed received by the customer, is exposed to repudiation threats. The opposite and desired property to repudiation is non-repudiation. The exposure of information to users who are not authorized or intended to have access to that information constitutes an information disclosure threat. A malicious user who is able to read another user's profile without granted authorization is an example of an information disclosure threat. The desired application property that is compromised in the case of information disclosure threats is the confidentiality property. Applications need to be available to legitimate users, especially in the case of e-commerce applications. The desired property is therefore availability. The threat that could negatively affect an application's availability to legitimate users is the denial of service threat. Denial of service threats enable malicious users to deny or degrade a service to legitimate users. Finally, the last threat in the STRIDE acronym is the elevation of privilege threat. These threats are created whenever a malicious user is able to transition from one privilege level to another without proper authorization. For example, a malicious user from the internet, that is, an anonymous user, who is able to elevate their privilege level by compromising an application running a system is an example of an elevation of privilege threat. The desired application property that is affected by elevation of privilege threats is the authorization property. As mentioned earlier, the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process can be used by non-security experts to enumerate potential threats to an application. The chart shown here shows the common stride threat types by data flow diagram elements and can be used as a baseline for enumerating threats, especially for non-security experts. To use this chart, each data flow diagram element in the application model is analyzed for the appropriate threats. For instance, if the data flow diagram of the model application contains an external entity element, then the threats of spoofing and repudiation must be considered. Alternatively, if the data flow diagram of the model application contains a process element, then all stride threats must be considered. You may notice that the check mark in the data store slash repudiation store is red. This color coding is used to indicate that the data stores are sometimes affected by repudiation threats. Data stores are affected by repudiation threats whenever the data store themselves are a log. After threats have been enumerated, the next step in the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is to select mitigations to address those threats. In order of preference, the four ways to address threats in the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process are outlined below. The first approach is to redesign the application to eliminate identified threats. This is typically the preferred mitigation path. However, there may be situations where an application cannot be further redesigned without removing vital and valid business functionality. In this situation, other mitigation op options may be more suitable. The next mitigation approach is to use standard mitigations. These types of mitigations are well understood and are preferred mitigation paths whenever redesign is not possible. Examples of standard mitigations are using access control lists to protect registry keys, using SSL to protect network connections, and using the principle of least privilege to isolate elevation of privilege attacks. Examples of standard mitigations will be shown in the next slide. If standard mitigations cannot be applied, then the use of unique or custom mitigations may be more appropriate. A unique mitigation is often difficult, time-consuming, and risky to implement. Implementing a unique 
mitigation properly requires deep expertise in the particular technology the mitigation is being developed for, such as databases and network protocols. A unique mitigation may appear to provide sufficient controls when in fact it is not. Therefore, it is recommended that you work with security experts when implementing these types of mitigations. Finally, the last approach to mitigating threats is to accept the risk in accordance with policies. In some situations, redesigning an application, using standard mitigations, or using a unique mitigation may not be practical. For instance, it may be less expensive to accept an application risk than it is to redesign the application or implement a standard mitigation. Or, there may be certain assumptions or external dependencies that an application makes that mitigate certain threats that may need to be communicated to users. At Microsoft, it is company policy not to ship any applications with moderate, important, or critical vulnerabilities unless formally documented by senior executive and approval is received. Here are examples of standard mitigations by stride threat types that are provided to help you consider how to mitigate threats. For example, a standard mitigation to address spoofing threats may be to use IPsec, digital signatures, or me message authentication codes. Chapter 9 of the Microsoft SDL book provides a more detailed chart of recommended standard mitigations as prescribed by the Microsoft SDL. The last step of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is the validation step. The objective of the step is to help ensure that threat models accurately reflect application designs and potential threats. Models should be validated to ensure that they are accurately and sufficiently reflect the actual application design. Otherwise, any accuracies or insufficiencies could result in some threats being overlooked. Some model validation guidelines that follow include ensuring that your data flow diagram contains at least one trust boundary, ensuring that all data flow paths are properly represented, and ensuring that all data sources are represented in the model. Enumerated threats should also be validated for completeness. Each data flow diagram element, for instance, should have the appropriate set of threats enumerated. The chart that maps stride threat types against data flow diagram elements is a good baseline to use to ensure that threats have been sufficiently enumerated. Mitigations should be labeled clearly if they are standard mitigations or unique mitigations. Mitigations should also have tracking items open in tracking databases so that the status of that mitigation can also be tracked. Finally, any assumption or dependencies noted during the threat modeling process should have at least one corresponding test case to validate that assumption. If an application depends on an external system, then the owners of that system should be conferred with to validate those dependencies and any related assumptions. Microsoft has published a tool that is freely available for download called the Microsoft SDL Threat Modeling Tool. This tool helps application designers model their applications for threats as well as identify and manage corresponding mitigations. Refer to the link shown here for more information regarding this tool, such as links to download the current version of the tool, online videos, and tutorials. As we have seen in this presentation, threat modeling can help application development teams develop safer and more trustworthy applications. Applications that have been properly threat modeled are likely to be more resilient to malicious user attacks because Security concerns have been considered and mitigated early in the design phase of the software development lifecycle, rather than later after the application has been implemented. Since the inception of the Microsoft SDL in 2004, Microsoft has required that all product teams create threat models and that all threat models must meet the following requirements. The first requirement is that all functionality identified during the cost analysis phase or stage two of the Microsoft SDL must have corresponding threat models. Typically, threat models must be considered for all at-risk code, all code written or licensed from a third party, all features and functionality in new products, and all features and functionality of updated versions of existing products. The second requirement is that all threat models created must meet minimum quality requirements. All threat models must contain data flow diagrams, 
assets represented by data flow diagram elements, enumerated threats and mitigations. More information regarding minimal quality requirements for threat models can be found in Chapter 9 of the Microsoft SDL book. The third requirement is that all threat models and reference mitigations must be reviewed and approved by at least one developer, one tester, and one program manager. The review and approval should be performed by architects, developers, testers, program managers, and others who are intimately familiar with the application being threat modeled. Not only does this help establish accountability for the threat models produced, but it also helps to further ensure that threat models are comprehensive and accurate. The final requirement is that threat models and any associated documentation, such as functional and design specifications, must be stored using document control systems. Threat modeling captures a wealth of data regarding the threats and mitigations associated with an application. It is therefore important to document and preserve that data and any lessons learned for future iterations of the application. This concludes the discussion on the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process. This process enables application development teams to identify security threats to a system, determine risks, and establish appropriate mitigations. The Microsoft SDL threat modeling process yields the greatest benefits to application development teams when it is performed early in the software development lifecycle. Specifically, the design phase is the ideal point within the software development lifecycle to start threat modeling. At this stage of the software development lifecycle, any changes to an application can be done easily and with the lowest cost as compared to performing changes later in the software development lifecycle, such as during the implementation and verification stages. Additional benefits of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process include the ability to use results from threat models as a guide to focus security verification efforts. Security testers can quickly look at threat models and understand the components of an application that are most at risk, based upon the types of threats that are present. Another advantage of the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is that it can be used by non-security experts. Application development teams may not have in-house security expertise available, and Microsoft has designed its threat modeling process in such a way where the process can deliver proper results when employed by non-security experts. The Microsoft threat modeling process consists of four steps. The first step is the diagramming step, where application designs are modeled as data flow diagrams. The next steps involve enumerating threats against the data flow diagrams. To do this, the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process leverages the stride model and maps different stride threats back to specific data flow diagram elements. By doing this, the overall threat modeling process is more objective, repeatable, and can still be used by non-security experts. After threats are identified, responses to those threats are chosen. The four basic approaches to addressing threats using the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process in order of preference is to redesign to eliminate the threat, use standard mitigations, use custom mitigations, and finally accept the threat according to company policy. The final step in the Microsoft SDL threat modeling process is to validate the threat models to better ensure that threat models are complete and comprehensive. To aid application developers with threat modeling efforts, Microsoft has published a tool called the Microsoft Threat Modeling Tool. This tool is freely available for download and can help application designers model their applications for threats as well as identify and manage corresponding mitigations. Threat modeling is required activity within Microsoft SDL. Since the inception of the Microsoft SDL in 2004, Microsoft has required that all product teams create threat models in order to continue to deliver safer and more trustworthy applications to customers. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically, in this presentation which focused on the Microsoft SDL threat modeling principles have been shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecurityllc.com.